Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 4th of November and the episode title is 17th Century Monsters. The Nat One is in the spotlight thanks to votes from Geek Nata's generous patrons and I'm already talking to the publisher. Can you believe we're in November already? It's pretty much the end of the year. Well, kind of. But the candidates for the December RPG Publisher Spotlight are up. And they are DR Games, Keith D. Edinburgh, Sandy Pug Games, John Freeman, and Solution. Now, Solution is spelled with sevens, ones, and O's. Patrons can vote via the private poll. Tomorrow is Guy Fawkes Night here in the UK, also known as Bonfire Night, and it means fireworks. The story of Guy Fawkes Night picks up in 1605, when Guy Fawkes, a member of the gunfighter plot, was arrested while guarding explosives that the plotters had placed beneath the House of Lords. The Catholic plotters had intended to assassinate the Protestant king, that's James I, and blow up his entire parliament. Celebrating that the king had survived, people lit bonfires around London. That King James was also King James VI of Scotland. Welcome to the messy history of the United Kingdom, where we often forget that it was a Scottish monarch who kind of united the thrones. As I say, it's very messy, so let's move on. Although we will return to 17th century European history in just a bit. First, I want to talk about Boogeyman. It's a shame I can't show you the artwork in this podcast. Maybe I'll try and put together a video because the Toy Zone has researched and illustrated almost every dominant bogeyman myth worldwide. I'm impressed. There's the Lamia from Libya, not a man, but the dominant scare the kids into submission story. Krampus from Austria, who seems to be getting really popular. The Div from Abhijam and Kuko from Uruguay, and so on. The same article cites research that says while myth building and having an allegorical figure can help kids work through stuff and learn, straight out scaring them into behaving does not help them master their education. Now, it sounds like running tabletop games which engage kids' brains is a good move, but that leads me to running how tabletop games that engage adult brains can be a chore. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I suggest to you that if, as the DM, you mention a strange mark, perhaps just a smudge, on the dungeon door that your players will investigate it for hours. If you mention that there are a lot of red cars on the street right now, that too will trigger a time-consuming set of questions. On the other hand, try and run a mystery adventure. Either the players will ignore it, or they seem to solve it straight away. Josh Fox of Black Amada Games is a much better GM than I ever was, and you still have a few days left to back Lovecraft-esque on Backerkit. That's the second edition of Black Amada's popular mystery game. As there's a crowdfunder live, Josh kindly agreed to write the glue that binds mysteries for us. That's a thought piece on the blog about how to design mystery games. It's no mystery. It is worth a read. A set of games that have a good spin on danger and mystery are Cold City and Hot War. Both are by Malcolm Craig, who now lectures in history, and both are now being picked up by Handiwork Games for new editions. In Cold City, a game of political ambition, characters are defined not just by who they are and what they do, but by their views of the other characters and the trust that those characters have in them. In Hot War, a maelstrom of nuclear and more sinister weapons, the characters are the special situations group, a motley band of men and women tasked with jobs too dirty or dangerous for anyone else. Interestingly, and we don't have all the details on this yet, 
Both games are also going to be a partner of academic study into how tabletop RPGs influence our understanding of history. Call City and Hot War are not the 17th century European mentions that I teased. That comes from Musketeers vs Cthulhu. Nightfall Games are turning the Musketeers vs Cthulhu in the Court of King Louis, a short story by Claudia Christensen and Chris McCauley, into an RPG. I remember Claudia as Ivanova from Babylon 5, but she's been in a host more things, and Blood of Zeus comes to mind as a somewhat recent one. Geek Native, uh, yours truly in particular, tried to break the Musketeers vs. Cthulhu news at the UK Games Expo this year. The Sumo social media post I did for that is still up, but I did not write a blog post. It's kind of a botch, but it's also kind of a win. I noticed the design of the Musketeers on a Nightfall poster and I couldn't work out which previously announced Nightfall RPG that could possibly be associated with. So I asked, and they told me. One of the interesting things about Musketeers vs Cthulhu is that it uses the full and proper Call of Cthulhu rules. So I went rushing off to Chaosium, who were also at the UK Games Expo, but there I cooled my jets because the staff at the Chaos in Booth did not have the whole story and they didn't think it sounded likely. So I bit back the details from Geek Native's coverage. But it turns out that Nightfall was right and Chaos in was right to be cautious. And perhaps I was right to de-risk it for the publishers. But it could have been a cool scoop. But now the Kickstarter is a roaring success and it's still live. Since we're talking Kickstarters, which does happen in Audio EXP, although rarely, let's also talk Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The RPG by Palladium, with contributions from the Turtles co-creators, is also live, and I've backed it. I've backed it because it was the RPG that I ran through half my senior years at school. I nearly didn't back it because the original game had some problematic descriptions of homosexuality. You know, describing it as a mental illness or a hindrance. But it looks like the game has got with the times, and all that data rubbish is out. But, well, I think that's an assumption, because the final text is still under wraps. Uh, Bronwyn, and perhaps with her geek native creative director hat on, found a set of rather cool-looking Jordan Peele posters this month, which, like the bogeyman, I wish I could show you. Instead, follow the links in the show notes, or Google for Geek Native. Lastly, in bundles, the bundle of holding in particular, there's an excellent offer on Iniburu, the sci-fi indie game of academia and exploration. But there's also a bundle on the mass slaughter of level zero characters in DCC funnels. On that note, keep safe, don't get slaughtered, and I'll see you next week.